Alright guys, it's uh, Chris here. Having a look now at uh, the educational brake caliper that I did. What we'll do is a quick uh, tear down and rebuild just to show you exactly what's going on, on the inside. So first off we'll show you just a, a basic uh, display stand I did with the uh, model. Something to prop it up off the desk. It won't sit flat by itself so this really helps out. And included I did uh, some 3D printed bolts and uh, yeah they work out really great and there are some wrenches in the STL files if you're looking to print out the wrenches too real basic but they do the job you keep them with the model underneath or something if you like as well alright let's tear her down they're just hand tight I didn't do anything with the wrenches so Last side here. I'll show you these bolts when I pull them out. They worked uh, right off the build plate. 0.2 millimeter tolerances. Uh, they were done on a Lulz bot mini. And uh, it's the first threaded item I've had come off without issues. It's the first threaded item I've done as well. But uh, anyways, here's what we're looking at. Simple bolt, simple nut. What I did here to get them to print good is uh, the tips of each thread I put them pushed them back into themselves about 0.2 millimeters and then I fill it at each edge and it builds in just enough uh, tolerances where it uh, threads on perfect and it's about as the nuts is about as loose as a typical nut would be that you'd find all right display stand aside nuts and bolts and the wrenches. Alright, so this is uh, the caliper. Um, up top here you see we got the pad retainer clip. And this clip's uh, fairly simple. What it does is it, it slides through each uh, half of the caliper body and supports the brake pads, suspends the brake pads. And in this gap in here, that's where your rotor is going to be spinning around. And as each piston comes out, you push each pad into the rotor. So this caliper is based off of a race car's uh, brake caliper, which is uh, the quick release pads basically with this pad retainer. So we'll pull that out first. That's going to drop both pads out. And here we are. So I did these ones in ABS just based off the colors I had. You can do them any color you'd like. Real simple. And each side the yellow part here is the caliper body, typically aluminum. Each side here is held on with magnets. As you can see here and here. They're a quarter inch diameter, one sixteenth inch thick, N52. So each side is basically the same, what you're looking at. This one's got the mounts, obviously, the mount side. And you've got your uh, bleed screws. The same on each half of the caliper. And this side, the caliper mount side, has the brake fluid inlet fitting. So coming from your brake pedal, you're going to have brake lines, the master cylinder, you're going to have brake lines coming, and they're going to thread right into this part of the caliper body. So we'll get into a bit more of that later. Um, each side here also has these black wear plates, they're called. They just pop off nice and easy. And I'll show you what they're used for here. Typically your brake, pad, your brake pad's going to sit here and be moving out from the piston. So these wear plates help keep the pad centered within the caliper body. And uh, they also keep, keep it as, a, as the pads grip the rotor, they keep the body from not being gouged out as the pads shift around. Because they're typically aluminum bodied, right? So. And you got four of these wear plates. They're pretty simple design they just hook in right here right up underneath and then pop in with the little tab here up top all right and to get out each piston I usually just grab it one on each, one thumb on each side slide it out there's your piston pretty simple a little sanding right you want to get a nice uh, fit you don't want the piston um, falling in and out right 
and uh, when you are fitting it to the caliper body you want to make sure you've got the piston ring in the caliper body before you start trying to fit the piston because that it's most likely going to change the fitment because your piston ring is going to probably print with a bit of flare on a typical uh, desktop printer anyways and the back side of the piston here there's a this is a void it's cupped so as uh, fluid is coming in to the piston from the crossover port here which is fed from the the uh, the main body side, the inlet fitting, your brake fluid is going to come in and it's going to cross over this little port into the second caliper body and it'll come out down in here if you can see it there's a little hole and that's where the, fill, uh, the fluid is going to come out and get in to this void behind the piston and that's what's going to drive the piston forward into the brake pad and ultimately the brake rotor so I keep a little pick tool because these uh, seals are in there pretty good. Pick one side out, right? I just get in there, pick it out, pick it up, twist as well as you're pulling it out. And there's your little piston seal. It's uh, one millimeter, so it's really, really small. I did PLA because I wanted to run the orange uh, seal. I'd recommend doing like an ABS, something along those lines, where you can it can take a little more flex. And uh, what you want to check for when you're fitting the piston seal is that when it's sitting in the body, see here I put one side in and then push this side, let it snap in. You want to make sure the gap, which right now is right there, you want to make sure there's basically no gap. So it's going to appear like it's a one piece piston seal ring. Uh, that's what they typically are with 3D printing, obviously it's got to be a bit different. So. All right, so there's the seal removed. And for that body, same with this side. Two fingers over here, two thumbs in the piston, slide it out. This one comes out a little sideways. Pop it out, same piston on this side, they're identical basically. We get in here again, pop this ring out. There we are. And there's that half. I'll talk a little bit here quick about the uh, the piston bore section of the caliper. Uh, you see here we've got the uh, piston seal groove. When you're assembling you want to make sure that's cleaned out. That's where your, your orange piston seal is going to sit, right? Right in here. And that's going to seal off the piston so the fluid actually stays behind the piston forcing it into the brake pad instead of um, a leak where you're going to lose your pressure and potentially all of your braking. So each caliper um, body has a bleed, uh, bleed screw hole here, as well as a crossover port. And like I said earlier, that's for allowing the fluid to come from this main body um, from the brake line and uh, allow it to get over to this section of the caliper with that little crossover port here, which is the same down here. And on the other side, another uh, bleed screw hole. And that little groove that runs all the way around, that basically allows the fluid to, to get in behind the piston and push it. And as well, get in and out of the caliper body through the bleed screws and the crossover port. And same on this one, piston seal groove and a fluid groove at the bottom. As well as your crossover port hole, your bleed screw hole, and bleed screw hole on this side too. Alright, so let's reassemble. I usually keep everything going to the same caliper body side. Just something I do. Set it into that first groove. One finger. Slide the other side in with the other thumb. Pop it in. Then I like to align the joint of the piston seal up with the pad retainer hole. I just like to keep it consistent. Then I grab the piston and I look for this mark on this side here I use that as top, you can pick any side as top line it up with the pad retainer hole as well get it in there it's a, it's a nice push pops in feels really good, it's a nice tight fit and we'll take 
the wire plates. Hook them over the bottom here, right? A little groove right there. So you want to get that lined up, hook it in, and then push that top piece in, and it's going to sit right in this pocket. So hook and pop it in up top. There's that half. And the main caliper body. Again, set one side of the piston ring in. Hold it in with one finger, push the other side in. And then align the gap right there up top. Take your piston. I'm just looking for the smooth side here at the top. Set it in. Again, nice snug, uh, perfect fit really. That seal really helps hold it in. So it's not going to fall out right when you're uh, trying to display the caliper. That was the main idea behind that. And then we will fit the wear plates on the main body side. And we can snap it together. We'll put it back up on the display stand. It makes it a little easier when you're um, trying to fit the brake pads in anyways. There we go, just hand tight for now. Alright, so there's the two caliper halves back together, back on the stand, and we'll fit the pads. So you want to take the first pad, the flat back side needs to go towards the piston on each half of the caliper, and take your pad retainer, usually slide the, pist the, the pad in with one finger, and then get the clip going, get it through one half. Then take the other half, see if I can do it while I show you. Slide it in with one hand, one finger. Slide the clip over, get it to a line. There we go, right through. And the clip sits over the other side there. Perfect. And you're done. And that, folks, is the educational brake caliper. Alright guys, and if you're looking for any more information on the caliper, where to download it, uh, if you're looking to get a hold of me or anything, all the information will be down in the bottom of the video description. Thanks, guys.